Hello everybody! Hi! We are live! Hello! Good to see you. Good to see you. So, so I'm the only one that's all branded tonight, Gary. You weren't branded yesterday. You only had a <laughs> on. Did I have my jumper on, did I? <laughs> <laughs> well, if people would known you were late <laughs> for a meeting, then you rabbited on for too long and I didn't have time to go for a shave. Oh, <laughs> so it's all right. your fault. Blame it's me. all your fault. Blame me. <laughs> I was I did my live on, on the HM page encouraging people to come along and then you you're mess, ringing me in the middle of the live going we're meant to be in a meeting I'm like oh god yes. <laughs> oh, It's god. because we're just so busy Oh so busy join the party who's that hello join the party I haven't got Becky, another phone so I can't Becky's tell you here. Hello oh, let, me, let me see if I can open up Facebook Piers, and then I can tell you Piers here um sandra's here hello sandra lovely to see you grace is here you're slacking grace there's at least five comments before you hello grace <laughs> uh vivian's here hello hello good to see you well it's been very active on the uh, phoenix page today there's been a few things i've been busy doing stuff all day and my admins have been messaging going oh there's this come up and that come up and you've got to get in there and answer this so so we will have a little chat about a couple of things. We don't think we actually really need to go in and have a look, but we'll 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 have a chat because I think one of the big questions that people have is, and it's a little bit of a, it's a worry that horse owners have when we say strip the diet out, put them out on hay, and crack on, and that's it. And people go, oh, but I do work with my horse i do competition with my horse i do this with my horse or that with it and and can the horse survive just on that well that may be what we might talk about this evening it depends what you guys want to talk about if you want to talk about that or not uh trisha ann's here a humble trish checking in <laughs> yesterday really put things back in perspective is that because we were talking about yeah the the research etc mm -hmm. morning from new zealand here for my hm fix i bet that's jenny hello jenny good morning uh becky becky says i'm awake for this one been watching all week on catch up uh, on my drive to work absolutely loving it thank you becky one of our students um hello says facebook user don't know who that one is meta's here oh meta hello good to see you angela holland's here hello hello um Hello from Tennessee. I've been in the group since the beginning, just quietly soaking in all the information. And now you feel brave enough to come along to a live and maybe ask us some questions. Chuck them at us. Chuck us questions. We love the questions. If there's a question that Gary and I can't answer, I'll eat my hat. Where is it? Here it is. Look, I'll eat it. I shouldn't think it's very pleasant to eat. It's a bit sweaty, <laughs> but I'll eat it if there isn't something that I've got at least some kind of answer for. Hello, hello again, says Karen. Hello, hello. Lisa's here. Hey, join the party. Have you got a glass of wine? I bet you have. I bet, I bet that's what I need. I need a glass of wine. Every time I see you, Lisa, I think, glass of wine. That's not good, Lisa. That's not good. This, you trigger that in me. You definitely trigger that in me. Deborah's here. I am here just watching the earlier live stream, which was very interesting. Had to break it off to come here, though. It's too much. It's too much information. Saying far too much for people. Me too, Becky. First live. Ooh. Um, hi from Northern uh, Alberta. Really enjoying the 15 day challenge. Fantastic, Marianne. Did you see? Oh, I've got to share this with you. Did you see? Let me share my screen if, if I can if I can find the. Did you see this? Did you see this? Let's put this on the screen. Da, da, da. Here we go. Can you see? Can you see it? Just get a whiz, whiz down. Look at that. Pink aisle, pink stand. <laughs> <laughs> that's the, the uh, question that we might talk about this evening. And that's something else we might talk about this evening. That was a good question. Uh, Trish, that's Trish being humble. Thank you, darling. 
that one looky here look so <laughs> this is bonnie doyle right bonnie today doyle. today is day eight of the 10 day challenge course my t-shirt came in the mail yesterday i must tell the printers to stop printing everything back to front that's a bit bad <laughs> Anyway, there she is wearing a lovely I'm a Hoof Hero doing it. And if she turn around, it says the Phoenix, the Phoenix way. way. So when you get yours, when you get a, your your T-shirt come through, when you when you when you take upon the 10 day challenge or if you buy the 15 and the 10 day straight away, we will get your T-shirt ordered and it will come out to you straight away. And you can proudly wear that you are a hoof hero doing it the Phoenix way. Please, please take a picture of yourself. Stick it on the Phoenix page so other people can see. Tell them what you, you, you felt about the challenge, how it's made you feel. Like Trisha says, she's come through it now, pretty much at the end almost. And she's like, wow, I now realize this just wasn't about the feet i've learned so much more and i now realize that it's more than that i've just got to let my old dog in hold on come on chicken come on here you come my door doesn't work properly come on here you come there we go sorry about that it's knackered my door's knackered uh where was i uh lisa says trim six horses today so yes opening the wine it's bad that i think of wine when i think of you when i look at you when i look at your name i think wow glass of wine becky says hi adele looking forward to seeing you at camp yes is adele here did i, I did I yeah that? she was the one that's uh that says first time being here for the live <laughs> oh. adele and i were chatting today adele did something incredibly amazing today i'm sure she won't mind me saying it because i want to big her up adele is one of our second year final year students and she is located shall i tell them adele people might come rushing through your door you've got enough she's located in sheffield or around yorkshire in the uk and uh Today, she went to a client and she'd asked the client to get the vet to have x-rays and the vet turned up and she had this incredible conversation with the vet. She felt so strong, so empowered, such a lot of knowledge. The vet was just like, oh, my God, like and she'd go and, you know, I know what you're going to say, aren't you? You're going to say about taking the toe off. And you went. Well, yeah, I was actually. And she went, do you know, if you do that, you obviously dump the horse onto their soul. Have you thought about that, the impact of that? Oh, yeah, but we think that we're taught about lever forces. She's like, it doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. We've got all these case studies. We can prove that it doesn't happen. And he's like, okay. So yeah, they ended up having this fantastic conversation. He learned loads. He's taken her email address so that he can send her the x-rays and so they can carry on chatting. I think he probably had the best time of his life learning something brand new. He was like, well, you know, we, we just, you know, to told this. And then he mentioned that a protocol that they follow, if it's going to work, they expect it to work within two years or take about two years. And <laughs> Adele went nine months. If it takes any longer than nine months, we know the owner's not getting it right. Nine months. I want to see that horse rehab their feet and come through this in, in nine months. He, and he was just like, oh. <laughs> so she was bigging. It was brilliant. So well done. She had to phone me up on the car on the way home just to say, look, listen to what happened. It was so exciting. So exciting. Uh, Caroline's here. Hello from Portugal. Hello, Caroline. Stop looking at all those farrier TikToks, etc., on Facebook and blah, 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 because it'll just it will make you go all mad in the head and you'll end up licking windows. Um, Becky says, wow, Lisa, you're a machine. Wow, because what what was that? A trimmed six horses today. Mm -hmm. Yes, that was the how many is that, that all? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mean it, Lisa. I don't mean it. <laughs> I wore it to lunch with the ladies. Oh, how sweet. Oh, fantastic. Did you get a picture of it? You should have got yourself a picture of it. We need a picture of you, Trisha. Steph, Steph says, love the shirts, because Steph's got one too. I know that. 
Um, Laura says, hi, lovely Phoenix family. You're here. What is it about Thursday evening? Everybody's turning up. Hello, hello. Uh, Lisa says, bit broken, naughty feet today. Oh, dear. <sighs> naughty broken feet today. Broke you, did it? The broken feet <laughs> broke you. No wonder you need to open a glass of wine. Uh, looking good, Trisha Ann. I bet you feel so proud to wear that. Absolutely. Um, is Gary Hinton back in France? Oh, that's Alison. Yes, I'm back in France, but it was a bit of a pain journey. Oh. I ended up having two ferries cancelled because of French border forces on strike, then ended up having to get a special boat, sleeping in a chair with lots of old fogies that wanted to go to the loo in the middle of the night. <laughs> <laughs> Climbing over you. Including you. In, uh, no, I don't. I'm not that old yet. Um, <laughs> And yeah, I had to go to Cherbourg, so the drive home was um, a day late, a day late, uh, and very long. But I'm here now. You're here now, you're here now. Uh, Trish says, I wore it to lunch with the ladies from the bar, and the only person who commented was the waiter. Didn't the girls from the barn say anything? They're like, I'm not saying anything, not saying anything. No, no. Hi. Charlotte's here. Dr. Charlotte Scott says, hello, Lindsay and Gary. You're legends. Thank you. Leg ends. Is that what leg you mean? Ends. Well, we're always at a leg end. Completely always at a leg end. That's our job. We are leg ends. <laughs> <laughs> ah, Facebook, yeah. Laura says, Alison plays the Hogan. Yes, look like his French background. Yeah, that's his, that's his, that's Rachel did that, didn't she? Your buffet yes. thing. Yeah, um, the, the buffet, buffet, yeah. Buffet. Margaret Porter says, hello, Margaret. Good evening from Devon. That was a lovely picture of Margaret, you the other day. Margaret, I haven't seen you for ages. Like just the other day. <laughs> just the other day. That was such a I nice day. I, I hope you had a good journey back, Margaret. Oh. By the way, everybody, in case you see Gary just sort of rocking gently up and down, he sat on a... I've got to be very careful what I say here. He sat on a big round bouncy ball it's a pilates ball i don't sit on a chair i sit on he a pilates sat, ball. Sat on his, he sat on his no lindsay don't go there it's not right. don't go there lindsay it's not right shut up now you've not even had any wine <laughs> uh go adele yes 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 go adele uh elizabeth's here elizabetta's here hello from croatia hello elizabetta it's lovely to see you here marianne's lots of claps lots of claps amazing um uh, Becky says that's fantastic Adele he'll be on a workshop next wouldn't that be good eh uh, Angela says way to go let Adele Tazzy man hi Steph okay or oh, you're making me blush just think now right because I can see your little face on that first <laughs> workshop Adele I can so in can freezing I. cold Yorkshire oh <laughs> I've never we been so cold in all my life. Freezing. <laughs> and you turned up, I think you turned up a bit late. <laughs> so I, I don't remember, remember that. I don't <clears> remember and I that. think like, the reason the reason I know that is because I was looking at who wasn't there because we were going through like the register, right? And then I got to Adele Tazziman, and I'm like, what an unusual surname. I've never heard. And I thought you'd made it up. I thought it was like just some like made up name and um and i'm like adele tazzyman and i remember you turning up and me making a big deal of it hello adele tazzyman what a really <laughs> interesting surname and that was it you were hooked from day one i remember that and lee was at that one too and helen golding on that workshop that was brilliant wasn't it well done adele says charlotte um becky says stop it one horse trim kills <laughs> me Ah, you'll get better. You'll get better. It's all about stamina. That's fantastic, Adele. It's addictive and don't even have a horse anymore. <laughs> oh. You can share all of ours, Charlotte. You can. Louise is here. All my trims were good today, Lisa. So Louise, another one of our final year students, she's here today. Well done. Everybody's joining in tonight. Oh, is it going to be a good one then? Um, Vanya's here. Hi, Vanya, first year student. Grace is here, second year student. Well, the pony I'm trying to save from cruel people has slightly fractured my foot. No. Really? Like, really? Or, 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 
really like fractured your foot. You're just saying that it's hurting. Uh, Steph says, I wore my shirt with my friend because I'm trying to convert her. She still has shoes on her horse. Her horse gets abscesses all the time. I tag her in all your videos and try to explain to her, but she's not there yet. She'll she'll turn. She'll turn. That that T-shirt, she'll have gone home going, she was wearing this T-shirt that said, I'm a hoof hero. <laughs> uh, uh, Louise, two 17-hand naughties. <laughs> Rubbish journey back, trains. Yeah, I'm always... We could just spend all night just going through all the comments, couldn't we? We're just it's, sharing everybody's life. That's great. It's, <laughs> it's, it's Charlie, you're all going too fast. Grace has a fracture of P3. <laughs> I hope they didn't use hoof testers on you while they were they were looking at your fracture. Uh, I'm trying to avoid A&E. Oh, no. Oh, no. Dun, 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 dun. Hello. Uh, evening all, evening all. Right then, right, we've spent oh, that was 15 Kate minutes. Hill. That was Kay, Kate. hello, hi, Kay. Hi, Kay. Everybody's joining tonight. Well, I suppose we better talk about a really juicy subject then. What should we talk about? I know. Let's talk about feeding horses. Uh -oh. Because feeding horses is always that subject that makes people go a little bit squiffy. I got blocked from that screwed on shoe post on Facebook because I wouldn't back down when the farrier said he had put four, four, five screw well inside the white line. Oh dear. Uh, hello, Trisha Ann says, uh, we should have a comment today. <laughs> yeah. uh, Laura says, Nikki Sira, he deleted it. Is Nikki here? Is she one of the hellos? They're all after, they're all here tonight. You'll be fine with a pair of glue-ons. La la ha ha, that's for Grace. Right, okay. So let's talk about food. Let's talk about uh hay. Let's talk about what happens when we were rehabbing horses, right? So Gary and I and the rest of the crew say strip it back, strip it back, strip it back. It's very, very important that you've got to take out all the other stuff and that you just feed the thing that is the cornerstone of the horse's diet the one thing the horse can't do without so that's when something is a cornerstone of the diet when it's something that is so important they can't they can't do without it because um they can uh they can they can eat grass right but they can do without grass they can't actually do without hay OK, it's very, very important that they can't. And there are lots of people feed their horses grass and only feed hay in the uh, winter. And that unfortunately causes issues in the gut. But I really wasn't going to talk about that tonight, the grass and what happens with grass. It was really more about the additional things, the food feed additives. That's what I was going to talk about tonight, because anything that is above and beyond the horse's actual dietary need, which is the cornerstone of their diet, which is hay 24, 7, 365, anything above and beyond that is actually classed as a feed additive. All right. It is a supplementary feed additive. Now, we tend to call supplements as uh, something that's labelled supplements from a supplement company and they're in bags and they often look powdery um, and, and that's what we tend to call a supplement. We don't tend to call other bag feeds a supplement, but that is exactly what they are. They are supplementing the daily diet of your horse. Now, there's all sorts of things we can unpick from that so we're going to start to see if we can unpick some of it tonight because there was a a question a very valid question on the group from a member i think a new member who asked what could she feed her horse additionally to the hay diet the horse has hay she said constantly what could she feed additionally to the diet because the the horse because she putting that she events she does quite a lot of um, energy activity with her horse and what can she feed on top so this is a this is a this is a big thing that people <laughs> louise says no not hay i'm looking for more hay no, no, no we're not going to talk about the hay part we got that right we've got that well have we got that 
have we now? Because here's an interesting thing. We're going to unpick it from the start. So let's just start with hay. We're going to unpick what we talk about when we say strip it back and how we mean strip it back. So a great deal of horses there are, in the world are overweight. We know that. And in fact, a lot of owners don't even know their horses are overweight. When we turn up, we are like, hmm you've really got a bit of weight. The horse is carrying a bit of weight. And then you start finding out what the horse is fed. And it's the usual thing is they're on grass. They have some hay. They don't always have hay. It's very rare when we turn up that the horse is on hay all the time. They usually only get it when they go in the stable for various reasons. Sometimes livery yard owners don't like it in the field. Um, and if they're at, at yards, that is a problem. Uh, and so we 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 stuff to start unpicking it with them, and then they they're feeding bag feeds. They've got inappropriate licks. They've got treats that they're using. There's all, and then the bag feeds is not just one, right? There's a few of them, and then you get all the supplements on top of all of that, and then they wonder why a the horse is overweight, and b why the horse has got so many problems with their feet. And on top of that, of course, we have the trim issues. So we turn up and we start unpicking it. Now, you may have heard me say in the past that um, <laughs> ladies have taken over horse, horse keeping, right? It didn't used to be us. It used to be them. It used to be the men that, that really looked after horses mostly because they were... <laughs> They were using them for in battle and they were using them to plow the fields and they were using them to take their stuff to market and all of that sort of and for, for transport and et cetera. And, and uh, so therefore they were the ones that kind of did the stuff with the horses and men, I have to say, are the easiest clients when it comes to food with horses. I can turn up to a male client and I, and we don't have that many of them. Honestly, we don't. The majority are female. And we turn up to it, which is interesting because the majority of farriers are male and the majority of barefoot specialists are female. Isn't that interesting? There's reasons for that. And uh, I'll turn up to a, a man, a male client, a father of a horse. And, uh, and I will say, okay, right, you've got to cut that out. What? You've got to cut that out. You've got to cut out that feed and that feed's no good either. Like we're carrying a bit of weight anyway. How much work do you do? Well, I hack out every day, once a day. For how long? An hour. All right, cut it all out. Get rid. You don't need it. What, you mean he can actually survive without that bag feed? I'm like, yeah, oh my God, I am going to save so much money a month. All I have to do is get the hay. Yeah, right, I'm on it. That's it. They stop immediately. Completely immediately. It's gone. If they've got chickens, they feed it to the chickens. Otherwise, they just can't be asked with it anymore. They don't feed it anymore. Like, no. Right. Rewind. Now I turn up at a lady's place. Now, apart from the fact that the lady's got the the the, the potions, the powders, the the absolutely lotions, powders, powders, potions, everything, all on a on a shelf, okay, and and they're like, um, well, that one I don't use that one anymore because that one doesn't smell very nice. The horse doesn't like that, so I bought it's bloody expensive, but I don't use it anymore. That one there, I like that one. That smells very nice, and the horse likes that, so I do use that one. That one there my mate uses and um, we kind of share that. So sometimes I put it in, sometimes I don't. And all those down the other end, I don't use those anymore. Sometimes I do, but sometimes I don't. I'm like, okay. And then we've got all these bins in front of us and we're picking up, lifting the lids and looking in the bins. And so this is a, this is a muesli mix. This is like what you might see a hamster eating, you know, with like crushed maize in it and peas and stuff. That's in that one. Then in this one, we've got a chaff. Sometimes with molasses, they're getting a bit canny with that. These these feed companies, they know that owners are getting canny, so not always with molasses. Uh, and then we move on like that, a few pony nuts. These are the sorts of things we see, right? So I go, same approach with the man as with the woman, right? Or with the woman as with the man. I go, you don't need all that stuff. How much do you hack out? 
three times a week. So not even as much, let's say. Three times a week for how long? An hour. And then I might do a bit of stuff in the arena. Brilliant. Okay. You don't need it. Cut it out. Your horse is a bit overweight. Just you don't need it. What? Well, all you need to do is you need to feed this hay. Okay, right. I get that. So I need to feed more hay. Right. I'll try and do that. I will feed more hay. Brilliant. And you need to cut this out. What? You need to cut out all of this that you have in front of you, all of these and all that up on the shelf, at least for a good six months, right? We've got problems, feet, body problems. It all stems from the diet. Cut it out. Well, I get the hay bit, but surely if I'm feeding just hay, it's not going to be enough for the horse, right? It, it isn't. It's not going to get everything it needs. And I go, but it will. It's incredible. These are herbivores. They are so tuned to get all the best things out of stuff that we'd be like, why would you? No. Hey, no. They're herbivores. Because you're not feeding the horse, remember. You're feeding the gut, the hind gut, the microbes in the hind gut. So you explain all this to them and say, yes, you can get everything out of it. I, I, can, I can show you all these horses that just eat hay and they get everything they need from that hay because they look fantastic and they are great and they're, they're, they're fit and they're, they've got energy and, and, and all of that. Now, we're not going to go into why that works and what happens with the microbes and what happens with the hay, other than obviously it ferments by the micro microbes. <clears throat> but the point is, the lady will go into cold turkey. What I don't know, no more breakfast because we tend to give it anthropomorphic words like breakfast, lunch, dinner, supper. We tend to use those kind of words when we're talking about it. Men don't, just a bucket feed. Uh, women tend to go, it's, you know, well, the hill's going to miss his breakfast. Well, you'll get used to it. You know, don't worry about it. And then you go, if you really want to give something, it, each season, Mother Nature was incredible with her seasons. She grows in each season what the animals need. So go out and pick a load of herbs, nettles, cow parsley in the summer, cleavers, whatever it is, and bring it in, chuck it in the, chuck it in the field. They'll love that. So do that. Give them that every morning. Oh, okay second trim turn up they may have got rid of some of it but not all of it and this is not all clients because some clients are like it's gone Lindsay but the majority are like oh and it's really difficult to get them to get over it isn't it Gary very much so um it's 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 quite a shock um and I think it's because doesn't matter how um, much money it costs I, I'm going to try and be as equal as I can being a bloke. <laughs> you, Lindsay's put me on the spot. <laughs> um, ladies, you are the nurturers, you are the shoppers, you are the spenders, and we love you for it, but your horse does not need it. If you put mm. as much energy and expense into finding decent hay, oh my goodness, your horses would thank you for it. <clears throat> but equally, when we tell the blokes, it's because we're tight. It really is. <laughs> it is because we're tight. <laughs> it is. So oh, I've got, I, I hope I've given that an even balance. I, I, I think the yeah, blokes are tight. <laughs> the blokes are tight, and and the ladies, um, the yes, the, the, their horses. I'm trying to find that they, they are our children, but they're still <laughs> horses. <laughs> uh, and it's the way you also have to understand. And I'm I'm not I'm not going to do it because I was going to go through Google and I'm, but I'm not I'm not I'm not because I, I I can't do that. But it, it's you also have to understand the way that you are conditioned. Okay, you have been conditioned. Just go back thirty years. Before 
the pet food companies got hold of the fact that horsey owners, women, were growing in number and they liked to feed. Right. When they're selling cat food on the TV, they're not selling it for the for the cat's benefit, are they? Because a the cat cat's like pfft. they they make it look juicy and lovely and tasty and gravy like. It's the same with dog food. And you're like, um, mm, that's going to be nice. My doggy and my cat's going to love that. And they're selling it to you with a pretty looking cat and a pretty looking dog on the front. Right. They're selling it to you, not the men very rare. It's usually the women because they know that they're the ones that are going to spend the money. So you get conditioned to believing and then you're with your friends. All the feeds that you see out on the market today weren't there 30 years ago, 20 years ago, 15 years ago, 10 years ago in some instances. And yet all those years ago, horses were working harder horses were working harder. They were doing jobs every day. Very few horses were kept for just leisure because people couldn't afford that. Horses were kept for work. The only people that could have horses for leisure were people who had quite a lot of money. And that was very few and far between. The grand hoi polloi of the world basically just had, you know, the, 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 horses to work and these were fit animals and they needed them to work i was recently in morocco which was a little bit difficult for people who love horses um i didn't see any overt cruelty but i did see horses that were worked quite hard donkeys mainly but in in terms of being worked very hard well no not in terms of being worked very hard but in terms of being sort of what we would class perhaps not the way that we would do it uh, but there were horses there that were pulling carriages, and these carriages were beautiful. I was in Marrakesh. Was I in Marrakesh? I was in Marrakesh. Yes. Just for a yeah. second then, I thought I wasn't. I was in Marrakesh, and uh, there were these horses everywhere that were uh, pulling these these beautiful carriages. And I have to tell you, these were some of the fittest horses I have ever seen in my life. They didn't have an ounce of weight on them. They weren't skinny. They were muscly. And they weren't bony and ribby. They were muscly. And they'd wait all day. They'd get water, of course, but they weren't fat fed bag feeds all day. And they were working. We When we were going back to the hotel at night, it, it was at least eight o'clock at night when it was getting darker and the horses were going home. So some of those horses were out pretty much all day. And when they went home, they went home to a dirt paddock. No grass, just hay. And that's all they were fed. Dirt paddock, because I don't know if you've ever been to Marrakesh, but there ain't any green grass growing in many places. And so that's where they lived. And then they go out every day, work hard, hard pulling these big, big tourist carts. They're big tourist carts. They're not little, they're massive. Um, and they were fit. And I have to say, a lot of the times their hooves were what Gary and I would consider as not looking that great because they were they were off, up on stilts. None of them were cut short. No, I didn't see one that had its toe cut off. Not one. They were usually just a bit too much foot, in fact, with a little shoe on the end. But And they were going around like anything okay i guarantee those guys that own those horses in marrakesh do not feed them i'm not going to name but feed them top line something or other let's not name any particular breeds at uh, feeds because they won't be able to afford it right these people live hand to mouth in in places like that and they, they're not, usually they don't own necessarily all the carts and stuff, uh, the carriages rather. So these people are not able to manage these horses. Right. Let me give you another example. In the, Mong in, in the Eurasian steppes, we have the Mongol horses, right? And we've put in the Barefoot magazine on several occasions about the Mongol derby. It freaks the Westerners out, especially Western horse ladies. <coughs> They're like, oh my God, that looks so cruel. It's awful. These horses, they're that, you know, they're 
racing them 40k at a time and these are the fittest animals you are going to find one of the fittest horse horses you're going to find in the world okay that are kept out there on the eurasian steppe when they're not and they stallions they use they don't ride mares they use only stallions and when they stallions are not being raced and, and they're not full of martingales and special clever tack and uh, flash bands none of that this is raw let's get on let's ride let's these horses shift and when they're not they only do 40k stints then they have a break and then the next 40k and then something you know so they do it like that there's vets there there are are people there that are welfare people that make sure that these animals are okay and when they stop they don't go into a stable they they're on a big like line they put this massive line and they're attached on a line so they can move up and down the line with their own buddies all right next to each other they're all on a big line and they they get given hay and they don't feed them tons of supplements and bag feeds they get hay and they get um they get the nibbles of of the very fibrous eurasian steppe grasses that are out there okay and they are lean machines fit as and then we go backwards let's go to the western world and let's look at europe america uh uh australia new zealand to a certain uh, to a certain extent uh south africa these are big places where horses and horse owners are and these animals are stopped from moving because they're kept in boxes kept in stables not like the ones in the eurasian steppe not like the ones in marrakesh these are horses that aren't able to move a lot so they're not very fit and they're they're and so many competition horses which is it confuses Gary and I completely where they're all kept in stables because they're terrified of them hurting themselves. And these are athletes that they keep, it's like saying to um, Usain Bolt, please just sit in your toilet all day long. And then when you come out, I want you to run a hundred meters and be the fastest man in the world. Mm, it doesn't work like that. Right. So these all horses are kept unfit largely in stables. Now I'm not saying this is everybody, of course, we, we, we're talking to progressive horse owners here, and this isn't going to be you necessarily. Um, and it just depends where you keep your horse. But largely, this is what happens in the big wide world, and uh, in the Western world. And so and they're overfed, right? They're getting fed stuff that these Mongol derby horses would never get fed, that the Marrakesh horses would never get fed. And they're being fed these feeds, because we're told that's the right thing to do do you think the man in marrakesh who if the salesman turned up to him and went pal you know you got to feed this bag feed here because because otherwise your horse is going to lose his top line and it'd be like and how much is that oh it's going to be quite a lot of money it's going to be so and so 20 quid let's say because that's how much roughly 20 25 quid it goes up 30 quid in in the uk 30 pounds which is expensive, that's roughly, uh, that's a lot of money, that's roughly how much a bag feed will cost nowadays. He'd be like, on your bike, away you go, stop it. My horses don't need that. But this is what happens. And so we overfeed, we overfeed, we over supplement, we're made frightened, we're scared, we can't, the cornerstone of their diet, the hay, because we don't understand the biology of it, we don't understand what the microbes do. So we feed over the top. And it's getting worse. And not only do we do it to them, we do it to our dogs. We do it to our cats. And now, because I don't know about you, but I don't know very many people who supplement their cats and dog feed, right? They're told it's a complete feed. You go and feed it. Gary and I feed raw. My horses have chicken and a beef usually. Dogs. Dogs. Your dogs. My dogs. Not horses. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> my dog. I don't give my horses chicken and beef. Sorry, I don't do that. My dogs have chicken and beef chopped up raw. They have it. Mine have it once a day. Gary's have, has it twice because he's got uh, for reasons for that. But but that's all they have, right? Nothing else. Occasionally they have a little biscuit or something, and they go off and they run and they last forever and they're they're, they're fit because we don't supplement. And yet we've got a horse that we keep. Uh, unfit that we don't ride very often 
and we want to give them supplements. Why are we doing that? Because we don't believe hay is enough because you've been conditioned to believe hay isn't enough because you don't understand the biology of how it works and what the microbes get out of fiber and mixed fiber, a mixed nutrient profile. So rather than go and spend your money because it's more convenient on bag feeds and down the pink aisle well, you'll be fleeced because you're a lady turning up to buy stuff for horses, rather than do that and spend your hard-earned cash on that, make yourself work harder to find better hay. Work harder to find better nutrient profile for your hay. Now, I'm not talking about going testing it because I've got we can talk about that till the cows come home as well. We're not going to talk about that tonight. That's another night. I can't I can't do it all in one night. I'll end up licking windows. So we're not going to do that. But we're but but in terms of mixed species, that's important because each plant offers something a little bit different. Each plant has a slightly different nutrient profile and each plant mixed together will allow those horses to get what they want. OK, so they are if you feed your horses hay loose and I want to talk about that in a minute you feed your hay horses loose for instance they will toss the hay about until they get to the bits that they like particularly love to eat and then they'll pop off to another hay pile and if that's the way you feed them and then they'll find something else that the horse likes to eat and etc cetera, etc cetera, right so this is important stuff that you need to know that they that is the cornerstone of their diet and anything else on top of that is stuff that they don't necessarily need so I'll stop there for a pause for a minute because there's more I need to say so let's go back and read some comments la 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 um um mm, mm, mm. uh as well as the other rubbish that fell out oh this is Adele going back to that very quickly as well as the others that fell out of the vet's mouth that day she told me my horse is too much ad lib hay it's scary oh no it isn't Adele it's scary that she thought that considering her job and that I don't know who this is and the people it's who Shannon Oh, I see. And the people who put their trust in the professional, Sh Shannon, Shannon, another one of our students, uh, fed a bit of cow parsley today. Brilliant. Coming up already. Is it coming up already, that Mark? Was, that, yeah, it is. Yeah. Um, that was Kate. Uh, uh, my horses love uh, cow parsley. I wish I had some here. It's just mud here. No plants yet. Um, okay, Steph. Stephanie, I know I'm amazed. Hello up there. I know I'm amazed you think people would be so excited that they would cut their cost and get rid of all that crap. But yeah, they're so attached to it. Exactly. And my friend has her shed with all her bins and all her chalkboards labelled. I think she likes that more than knowing her horse doesn't need all that. And she would save money and she's all about saving money. Yet she thinks she's treating him so good and feeding him so good and makes buckets of treats. And it's a little crazy. Um, and I, I don't I can't read the rest of it. I don't know if you can, Gary. Um, and I'll go over to our house and uh, spread all uh, spread all over the place. And she goes, oh, I know Stephanie was here. She was spreading hay everywhere. I don't understand the <clears> biology, <throat> you see. They, they bank on the fact. These people that sell this stuff to you bank on the fact you don't understand what you're talking about. So, I, oh, it's lovely. You need all these special things in your horse's diet because hay alone's not going to do it but it does it does because of the biology and the way that it works um i happily gave up bag feed immediately but i like to call myself frugal rather than tight <laughs> you, you're allowed to call yourself frugal Alison, because you are female blokes are tight <laughs> Um, Grace says, Grace, it's Grace, it was in the garden. The track is just waterlogged mug. I think I've got loads of conversations going on. It's hard to find any good hay in my area. We do grow some of our own, but when we need to purchase hay, the farmers grow for cows and not for horses. Right. So, like I said, you got to dig, you got to go searching. It's not, it is hard. It's not necessarily impossible. The word is hard, not impossible. It's difficult. And, and it becomes the biggest bane of our lives. Believe me, I know. I've lived it for years and I know how hard it is for you. I know. But I'm telling you now, it's what they need and it's easier, not easier, it's harder, of course, It's than just popping down the, 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 the uh, 
agricultural store and buying some fish. It's more convenient. They know that. They know it's more convenient. And that's what they want you to do. Um, uh, same here. Yeah. Margaret says, I browse the hedgerows every morning. <laughs> What's your favorite? <laughs> that's what it fits. <laughs> I browse the hedgerows is every that, morning. Is that with hands or with just teeth? No, no, no. When I walk the dog collecting different plants. Ah, I see. The neighbours think I'm bonkers. Because you are. No, I didn't say that. My neighbours think I'm bonkers, but the horses love their free horse salad. Of course they do. That's what nature intended. Um Movement grows muscle, not food. Ah, Viviane, I was about to talk about that bit. We we shall go on to that in a moment. Um, well, in the USA, people are very overweight. So it's like the horses, of course. And if you don't understand your own biology and your own diet, um, and we're all a bit susceptible to that, aren't we? Then how are we expected to understand the animal in our care? And Gary will tell you, and we will tell you, they are very specialist animals in fact very specialist um if if um if we hadn't domesticated horses um for transport and fighting and all of that and we hadn't got into that way of being with horses um and they were endangered and they were living in safari parks and stuff like that. Do you think they'd be stuck in a box, fed a bag feed? What do they do to zebras? Would, would they? Yeah, they give them lots of room, don't they? Oh, they do. and you never see one on its own, do you? Never. No, because they know that zebras are need to be in a herd. And and. We know that our lovely Phoenix warriors are not these the, the, these people, but there are a lot of people out there. And it's because of tradition. It is because of tradition. It's the way that we've been brought up with horses, but it doesn't make it right. We're supposed to be the most intelligent beings on the planet. We can do better. We can. <laughs> and there's another problem that horses have with, with lady owners is that men generally don't give a SH1T about what other people think. Not really. They couldn't care less. Not really. But women, oh, they really care. I know. I can say this because I'm a woman. So I know what it's like to, to feel judged, to feel like people are looking at you, to feel that people are are saying oh, she, her horse looks a bit skinny when they're standing around with horses that are hugely overweight and obese. I know what it feels like. I know what it feels like to not be the odd one out. And we talk about that at the workshops because it doesn't feel good sometimes. When you're not, when you've got a tribe, this is your tribe. When you've got a tribe, it feels better because you're you're enclosed in a lovely little area. But when you step outside of that box, out of your tribe. It, it it can be a bit daunting because you know that people are going to say things and behind your back or rarely to your face or certainly on the internet, you know, and and because they don't understand. They don't understand what we're trying to say, which is there is sickness and pathology in the equine world, in the human world and in the pet world. But we're talking about horses, so let's concentrate on that. But there's sickness and pathology out there everywhere you turn and i mean everywhere you turn and and people are just oblivious to it half the time they're just used to it bracy clark had um a saying a quote and he said the eye uh the eye soon gets used to deformity and it doesn't see it anymore it's basically the I'm paraphrasing, but that's basically what he's saying. You get so used to seeing something that isn't right, you just think that that's right. And that's the same with in the veterinary and farrier world when they see horses with <clears throat> shoes on. Just because something is common doesn't make it normal. That's right. That's exactly right. So it's about conditioning. And we're conditioned, aren't we, from being little babies and children when we're given books about farmyards, because we like to read our kids or our grandkids books about farms and farmyards, and where is the horse? 
He's either in a grassy field or he's in a stable. Yeah? We're conditioned to think that that's what we do. And then how many people, and it may be some of you here, and I'm not judging you at all. It's just, it's a thing, right? People want to be part of a thing. And lots of people don't even ride their horses, yet they wear the uniform. Okay, they'll wear jodhpurs and they'll wear certain brands. You know, I've got my Ariat boots. You know, I like to wear my Ariat boots around. And and I don't wear jodhpurs because I don't like my backside in them. But other than that, you know, I do. I am I am a sucker for a nice hoodie and I'm a sucker for a nice, a, you know, a nice boot. Um, that's what I like. And, and we get sucked into a certain way of doing it and feeding is part of that problem going and think and oh yes i feed my horse blah blah top line that's what i feed it because that's what keeps him going when i go and do an hour a day right so now we've covered that part i want to then just talk about exercise Look at the modern dressage horses in competitions. The most are slightly obese and not healthily muscled. Indeed. I tell you, if you put them next to those horses in Marrakesh who weren't skinny or the Mongol derby horses, you'd be like, wow, they're fat. <laughs> fat. Um, licking windows. Yep, yeah, it's me. Uh, mine love brambles. <laughs> Lovely. Um, grooming farmers is tough. Yeah, it is grooming. You've got to keep grooming. Got to keep grooming. Um, mine too. It's a pro it's a problem in the Netherlands as well. I get my hay from Germany. I know, right? I know it's hard. I know it's hard. And I'm not saying it isn't. That I can't do anything about, right? I'm telling you about what's right and what the biology is and what they need. And I <clears throat> I know you it's difficult. Right. Even me, I've had I've had hay come in on a big lorry as well. I mean, it is difficult. But if we're going to be horse owners, progressive horse owners going into the future and we want to rid the world of pathology and get horses healthier so that we can be the shining light to be examples for other horse owners who have all those problems and we don't, then we owe it to our horses because we own them to try and do the best for them. And if that means spending all afternoon on the telephone, phoning as many people up as possible, like Shannon had to do a few weeks back and is still doing with her laminitic pony, you just have to do it. Because it is, it, they can't do it, your horses can't do it, they're stuck in their environment, you are in control of that and you have to be the one. And I know it isn't easy, believe me, but you can do it. If you've got a horse and you're here in this group, you can do it. Um, what would be in horse salad? Any Anything that's growing at the moment. Yeah. Pick it, throw it in your field, see what your horses think of it. What do you think about hay replacers, elderly horses with poor dentition? Now, you see, this is a different thing now. And what we think about that is, is that in the wild, those horses would be a goner if they've really got no teeth, right? They'd, they'd starve to death. Why, be, living in the wild is, is harsh. It's not harsh in the domestic world. It's only harsh because we, we overfeed them, basically, and under-exercise them and all of those things and don't keep them right. So that's what's harsh about the domestic world. But in the wild, it is very, very harsh and they die. So we don't want our horses to die. Obviously, we don't. You'd be surprised, in fact, how long a horse can go and manage with teeth falling out before you actually have to completely supplement their their feed and and if you do then you have to keep it as natural as possible and you have to keep something that is is you know something that can be soaked that they can but it's not sloppy and wet that they can they can bring they can eat but it becomes difficult because one of the things i was going to say is do you know quantifiably how much feed you have to feed your horse each and every one of you here tonight your horse to make a difference to their weight i bet you don't quantifiably how much I, 
And this is a good transition to what I want to talk about, labels on bagged feeds. It will give instructions on how much to feed. Most of you will look at it and go, oh, there's a range of lovely things in there. That's sure that's going to be fine. I don't know what they do, but that'll do. It's fine. Uh, be honest. That's most of you, isn't it? Most of most people, most horse owners just look at the back and go, oh, it's got a lovely array of uh, macro and micronutrients nutrients in there. It's got to be OK. And then we we it's not got any molasses in it. OK, that's fine. Perfect. It's also got mold inhibitors in there half the time. It's also got preservatives in there half the time. And these are the scraps half the time of the human industry, feed industry. OK, this is not special stuff. It's not special, special, special stuff. Most of the time it isn't. Uh, it's cheap. They have to make it very cheaply because they've got to package it. They've got to pay for the packaging. They've got to pay for the transport. They've got to pay for the design. They've got to pay for the, the all the way down the line. They're losing money until it gets to you. So that's why a bag that would probably cost them pennies to put together, they charge you 28, 30 pounds to buy. And they also know you're not going to buy loads and loads and loads of it. So they pump up the price. OK, so it's, it's just about having your eyes open. But on the back there, it will tell you on the label, it will say guidelines. It's important that it, you read that. It says guidelines and it tells you what to feed your horse. And they'll give you a weight roughly and they'll say, you know, 500 kilo horse in moderate exercise. What's that? what's moderate exercise and and how is that horse living do they know how the horse is being fed do they know whether it's on grass do they know whether it's on hay all of those things that are going in that horse's mouth they don't know they don't know what treats you feed they don't know what, how stressed your horse is they don't know what work it's doing what does moderate work mean and yet here we are with a overall broad spectrum feed that they are saying is going to put top line on your horse if you feed it a this certain amount every day. And yet every single one of you watching tonight will have horses in completely different, similar but different situations. How can that one feed cover all those bases? Right? And that's where hay analysis comes in, right? And having a bespoke supplement. But that's got problems too. But we're not talking about that tonight. We're talking about mainly bagged feeds rather than supplements are talking mainly about bag feeds so there's a problem number one secondly again let's just say that you took away all the hay the cornerstone of the horse's diet and you fed it bagged feeds how much bagged feed would you have to to, to give that horse which is why horses that have can't take hay becomes incredibly expensive how much bad feeds do you think you would need to keep a horse fit at that level in competition level and how much would you have to feed it every day to stop it getting ulcers as well i don't know whether we'll get answers uh a lot a lot to that a lot of bagged feeds and if you're feeding bag feeds with high calorie intake then that's not sustainable because that gets digested in the small intestine short chain carbs small intestine spikes insulin levels it's not sustainable right it's not quantifiable you can't quantify it now you'll hear people who will say things like and feed companies do this all the time. But if you feed this particular feed and supplement companies do it all the time, you will find your horse will be better top line. Um, it's going to look better. It's going to have more muscle on it. Where's the research? Where, where can we quantifiably see that? I was at um beta which is the Brit british equine trade association a few years back and i don't go anymore but i did at the time when we were promoting the magazine there and um i went up to one of the feed companies because i was a bit bored and i had a bit of time on my hands and i went round and i'm talking to this sales girl she saw me come in and i looked horsey and she well i didn't look that horsey but she's going oh awesome. here's a here's a victim sorry i mean a uh, client and and uh so she said um 
chatting to me and I'm asking her about her top feeds and and I sort of said you know what happens if I've got a horse that I'm doing a lot of competition with and she's going oh you need this feed and then, and then this chaff and I went oh okay I said so what grasses have you got in the chaff and she sort of stared at me a little bit that was okay but that was a kind of easy one she said oh you know they're kind of mixed and I said oh right okay what grasses is there rye in there and she went got a bit uncomfortable and wasn't so sure and um and and then I asked her if she had any quantifiable research that she could show me that proved that these feeds for any horse were going to do what it actually said on the back. She went a bit red and couldn't really answer the question. Uh, so she got a boss and he came over all big and smiley until I start awkward customer, awkward customer started asking awkward questions, didn't like that, got a bit sharp and was just sort of like, well, you know, you don't have to feed our, and it was weird the way that they responded. And I'm, it, cause he tried hard initially. And then I just kept breaking him down and going, well, why, why, how, you know, where's the research? Where's this? You know, I, I'm, I'm interested in your feed, but I want to see it. Nothing. It was baseless. It was just anecdotal and baseless is what he was telling me. He couldn't tell me that there wasn't ryegrass in their chaff. And in fact, actually, I got them to admit that there is probably more ryegrass than there's anything else. Because he pretty much realized he was I wasn't going to be buying their stuff. And and it, it it's the same with supplements. As lot it is it because they are feed additives, right? They are supplementary to what your horse needs. So they are what they call grass, which is Gary G R A S. Uh, generally recognized as safe that is a term that is a term that they use for bag feed and um, supplements and if it is classed as generally as recognized as safe um, then they can put on the packet what they like it's clever marketing it's fear marketing fear fear and hope marketing we call it yeah. So the final thing, because we've yapped on and I don't really want to stay on too late tonight, but the final thing I have to say about this is, OK, that um, the question is the question on the post in the member uh, the member put up in, in the Phoenix group was that she is doing competition with her horse and she's doing eventing. And at what point? should she add something in and what should she add because it's a minefield out there now this lady's kept horses for a long time i assume she looked like she had so the question can't be a brand new question right now i think the questions appeared because we're saying just feed hay and so she's like okay i'm listening to what you're saying but what so what can i feed them well clearly she's been feeding something but i don't know quite what and um, so what do I feed? And and I would, if she was my client, I would pick away and I'd be going, right, how many hours a day does your, your horse work? Because you're saying it's in hard work. Well, most people, unless they're in top level competition, um, and those horses don't tend to be the horses that, that we see all the time, top, top level, I'm talking, you know, Olympic type top level grand prix um their owners tend to work most owners tend to work so they can't ride their horses seven hours a day doesn't happen if your horse is doing seven hours plus a day of hard work so they haven't got the time when they come back from that to eat the hay they need to in that rest of the time they've got left in that day, then it might be that you may have to put something else in their diet to pep up what's needed. Somebody wrote on that post, there was a research, piece of research done in Sweden where they followed horses over a long period of time and they wanted to see if trotters trotters in competition could survive on hay with some salt and some minerals uh, uh, doing the work that they did next to others that were being fed bag feeds salt and minerals and hay right they wanted to see if they could cope and you know what the results were 
they could. They coped fine because we don't do it because we're frightened of doing it because if we think we're going to we, we, we don't do it it's going to happen and we're so convinced that what happens is we go out and we ride and we think the horse is losing weight we may even see that the horse is losing weight and we're like oh my god no that's bad but the muscle you've got fat turning into muscle because there will be a, a considerable about amount of overweightness in your horse i mean a lot of people will say no 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 my horse is lean slim maybe it is but muscle is exercise. So guys that go to the gym that have muscles and girls that have muscles like this, they haven't got that out of a bag. They haven't got that just out of a bag feed. They've got that by exercising. And then when they exercise, they put in calories. They need to put in calories, right? They put it in because they're going, they're, they're really, but, but horses can put in calories. It's called eating hay because they don't stop. We don't eat constantly. We're not constant grazers, foragers. We eat meals. And um, people in high competition will eat more regular meals, humans. And so horses, as long as they can get enough hay in them, and you're not doing ex in excess of seven, eight hours a day with that horse, then they're probably likely to get enough. Now, when things go wrong, is what you're feeding in terms of the hay and how you're feeding it. Because hay, if your horse is in hard exercise, don't feed them out of hay nets. And my suggestion is you do not feed horses in hard exercise in any hay nets whatsoever. You let them get as much hay down their neck as they need to with enough water when they need to do it. If you put them in hay nets, they will struggle getting the hay that they need because hay nets do slow it down. And they don't, you know, it's fine if they're, if they're not being exercised much or if they're on a track or they go out for an hour a day because the hay nets absolutely fine. They can get what they like, although I always would suggest feeding loose hay as well. It's important. Uh, but if your horse is needing to take in quite substantial amount, then hay nets are going to be harder work for them. So don't do that. So that's one thing. You just change your management as well. You have to change that and make sure that they're feeding, you're feeding enough hay and try it. Try it, but make sure that they, when they are getting their hay, they are allowed to have free choice hay, move around, not be locked in a stable. They need to be able to move about and take and, and have their hay. Honestly, if you go and feed a bag feed on top of what you're feeding and and, it, and, and what they found in the Swedish study, the lady said, and I'm, I'm going to see if I can find this study. They found that the only time they had to give the horses that were just on hay extra was when they were too excited or too stressed on an eventing day where they just couldn't eat the hay because they're pacing. And they and so the, in that respect, in, and that because of that, they would supplement by giving them a few pellets. But otherwise, nothing, just the hay, because they're able to. You just think you can't. They're able to take in enough, and they'll get everything they need. It's, it's tiring hearing people on the internet telling people all and spreading out all this stuff, saying people need bag fees, they need supplements, that horses can't survive on hay. They don't understand the horse. They don't understand the biology of the horse. And these are nutritionists. So think on. Save your money. Save your money. Um, blah, 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 blah. Uh, uh, do you think, do you think zebras kept in zoos in UK and similar countries get laminitis because they're kept on green grass? Yeah, they get problems. They, they, as soon as you take an animal out of their wild environment and you start confining them, they will immediately start getting pathologies. They may not be that obvious, but that's what happens. It's, worse for our domestic horses because we've taken them even further down they know that there's research been done on that they know that when they take wild animals out of their environment and they stick them in zoos and they stick them in they start getting bugs because things got start getting transferred between them and they start getting diseases and they start having issues and that is a thing it's known 
it's it's well well known um uh where did we get to yes i feel very judged by my mud <laughs> oh we're back to that thankfully my landowners are so understanding yeah 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 it is always i've always felt been the odd one out and always knew I didn't follow what everyone was doing and I found that's who we need Stephanie and I found someone I followed most of my life my horse and now I found you guys my people yay yes your horse follow your horse listen to your horse not what everybody else is saying we've done that one um horse salad Alexander's are the favorite wild carrot herb Robert herb Robert cleavers plantains etc it'll be different in different places of the world um, what about hay cubes and pellets along with hay? Because there is a variety in the pellets and hay cubes. So if you have a bunch of hay piles, can you add a bunch of small buckets of hay cubes and pellets? Not if your horse is getting enough hay. You don't need it because the hay pellets are hay, right? I know that they're getting, you, you think they're get, going to get more, but it's hay, 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 hay. Just give them the hay. Um, dandelions, mint, willow. I buy chopped hay and soaked Timothy for our old horse with no teeth. Yeah, that's right. That's a good one. Uh, yeah, I will look that up. Lovely. Sadly, I do because my horse has severe laminitis and suffers from EMS. Quite a harsh lesson. I'm at three weeks, but it's hard. And then in why is she hungry? Who who is that? Who who is that? Um, hold on a second. Gary's got to find it. How many comments? Good God. That's it, Daniel. It would be a big one. Right. Well, Gary's looking for that. If I'm reading this right, your horse has got acute laminitis and EMS. So that's a, a, a problem with metabolism because they're. That's Carolyn. 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 Da. Carolyn Da. And I'm at three weeks, but it's hard. No, 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 no. You shouldn't be starving your pony. If you've been told to starve your horse, stop it now, because that's not good for their gut and their, their, their gut system at all. They just need hay constantly. No rye in it, no alfalfa, no bag feeds. Your horse just needs lots and lots of hay, as much as they can eat. Never should a horse be hungry. Not ever. You just need to keep feeding it. And I know that the whole EMS, all I've been told I mustn't feed them a lot, is fine. You just got to keep feeding them the right stuff, not the wrong stuff, not the grass, not the bag feeds, not the supplements, just the hay, just good mixed meadow hay, and get them walking. I know if they're in acute state, they can't do that initially, but they soon will. Get them moving around naturally, get in a meet. And that's the way to fix it. It works every single time. Never starve a pony and never not feed them hay. So they should never be hungry. It's very, very, very important. If you need more information on that, let let us know. Put a post up and we'll help you. The industry lie. This is the, Carolyn's post as well. The industry lie all the time. There was a laminitis killer on a box. We would all jump onto it. Mm. Mm -hmm. Where's all those people that always talk about researching papers, but yet they don't question the food and the supplements? Yeah. After a look at the ingredients, half the time it's full of sugars and starch. Yeah. My vet said my AQA was overweight three years ago. I thought, oh, yeah, cheeky cow. <laughs> I look at photos now and think, oh, God. <laughs> oh, yeah, cheeky cow. Zebras in every zoo I visited a lot are kept on dirt tracks and fed hay. And, yes, they would get laminitis, but you have to sedate them to treat medicate. You're not allowed to. Yeah, that's right. You're not allowed to touch them. You've got to touch them the most minimal as possible. Absolutely, because they are so high in adrenaline response that the necessary sed sedatives are so intense that you have to avoid skin to contact with them. They are not kept on grass. That's actually what we found. We had a girl who came who was a zeb who kept zebra. Well, she was a zookeeper and she did feet, zebra feet. I grew up cutting her teeth on her dad's cow's feet and then started to become a, a, a zookeeper and doing zebras. She told us a lot about that and how you're not allowed to touch them. And we, in a freezer in the UK, somewhere, I can't tell you where, have some zebra feet in a freezer. And that person, do not show yourself because you know you're here tonight. Do not show yourself. So not probably allowed to have them. I use an organic chaff with no rye. And is that considered okay? Yeah. 
it it kind of is but why are you using a chaff why can't you just feed hay why why are you using anything that you've bought that's in a bag because if it's in a bag it'll have mold inhibitors and, and preservatives in it because guess what's got to sit on that damn shelf for quite a long time well until you come along and buy it they didn't have bag chaff years ago they didn't have that they don't need it you just need hay save your money spend it on your hay she said one hour a day um gore sweet meadow ground elder birch yep yeah, you got that in check what do the sweet swedish olympians feed their horses do you know no i don't know let, let they're barefoot right just let's not get too excited and think that they are the most natural <laughs> things on the planet. Not, we're not there yet. We're not there yet. They, we've got to the barefoot part. We got. We got there. They're Olympic horses. Uh, do you do you think they're going to be living out in a herd? When they're worth that kind of money. Yeah, Pe Pe Pedder says he does, Ooh. and I I don't know. I I don't know how much they they keep them that naturally, but. Some of the feed have a safe laminitic symbol on reading and grid. It's totally unsuitable. Do not get sucked into oh, that. Oh, don't get me started. That that would be it. That would be me ranting. Don't get sucked in. That would be me ranting. Because I go to a place that's right next door to this person. <laughs> let's talk about teeth. Let's yes, let's talk about teeth on another one. And I'm not a dentist, so what we'll talk about is what we know, but um, we know enough to know what we're talking about. Variety is the key. Variety is the spice of life. My horse is really hungry all the time. Shouldn't be. No, no, no. Feed, constant hay. And and actually, hang on a minute. What are you saying is hungry? What, what are you horse. defining as hungry? Because horses need to eat constantly. Are you defining that as hungry? That a horse just wants to eat. That's just what they do. They just don't stop eating. Have you seen the size of them? And have you seen what they're eating? Hay. They need to consume a lot of it to keep it going, which is why I said with competition, they've got to be over seven hours a day every single day. And how many horses do you know do that? Right. They don't. So they'll get enough hay if you let them have it. Um, variety in the hay cube and hay pellets. That's why I'm asking. We usually only have Timothy and Orchard and the hay pellets and hay cube off of different lights, like to Bermuda. Yeah, I, I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. And um, because you want to offer the variety, I think my I think what I would do if I was in that situation is I'd steer clear of, of those and just feed the hay that you've got because the two species may, probably will be enough because he's not under a, a, an exceptional amount of work, is he? Uh, get a good mix of hedo, meadow with uh, Ryan, feed them as lib as much as she wants. Like, yeah, so I wonder what you mean by hungry. Define that if you can, if it, if that's current. If, got... if there's been a change, uh, um, uh, it, it could be um, uh, a psychological thing. If there's been a change, um, and I think you said that you've been following our way for the last uh, three weeks. Uh, I think I've got the right person. Um, uh, it could be a mental issue, um, and we call it starvation syndrome. Um, and it is something that we see a lot when horses in the past have been micromanaged by humans. It's almost that they've never had that satisfaction of the amount of fiber that they need when they need it. And it, this is not a physical problem. This is a mental problem because they have been kept hungry and not satisfied for so long. As soon as they get free access to hay, they have to gorge it. It's a bit like a dog that's been starved. It, the, they, they resource they guard. Everything that they see, the resource guard and all of this and all of this is all going of those on. Things, mental um, problems. Um, so it, it's more of a mental <laughs> problem, but this will settle down. This will settle it down. Will settle down. So if, it, if, if it is a starvation syndrome type thing that you're, you're suggesting that she, she's there and every time that there's food, it's just she's got to keep chewing. 
I think we're getting to the bottom Sorry? of it. Look, I think we're getting to the bottom of it. Uh, I've had a uh, calculation. She gets it. Uh, hey. She needs to have free access to hay. Don't weigh your hay. You're not weighing it. Don't. You're not weighing it. Don't no. weigh it and don't Every... go. She needs that much. You mustn't do that. You are no, you are setting no. a whole cascade of terrible things that will go on in your horse's gut if you don't let them have the hay that they need. If you're feeding mixed meadow hay, no right, won't put on weight anyway, right? Exercise. That's the important bit. No bag feeds, no supplements. It's very important. Constant hay. Do not restrict the hay i don't care what the professionals are telling you you mustn't do that it's incredibly bad for them don't weigh the hay don't do it chuck that away and feed what they want because a whole host of other problems are going to occur and that's why you think she's hungry because also she's she she knows that she's not going to get the hay all the time. They need it like how many times you turn a horse out in a field and you see him standing there all day long going, I'm not going to eat any grass right now. No, the only time they do that is when they're snoozing, traveling, or playing. Other than that, head down eating constantly. It's a constant thing. They need to. They're big animals. They need to get that herbage in them. Don't weigh your hay yeah i don't want to it know it's very you're... much a traditional way of treating laminitics because the the uh the, the, very often people will say that you've got to have them in a in a stall keep them on a deep bed and then you only the same, give them the same protocols uh, 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 same protocols and there is nothing to back it up nothing fail fail absolutely fail, fail, zero fail. Uh, if they've asked you, if they've told you to keep in a st stall as well, out of the stall. Carrot, Laura's on it. Don't worry about how many kilos she gets. Just give her unlimited. Loose, she can pick at it constantly. Um, eat, yeah. sleep, eat, dose, eat. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. Dose, dose, dose. Okay, great. Yeah. Uh, yes, my horses take pauses while the hay is still there, but now she doesn't take a pause at all. She searches. She searched me for the hay. Feed her constantly. You must. Yes. En encourage movement, feed hay. And it no sounds way. as though she has got some starvation syndrome. You give her free access to hay, the quicker that will break and then she will self-regulate. She needs to self-regulate. OK, so we talked about hay being the cornerstone of the diet. Like not grass, it isn't the cornerstone of the diet, hay is in a domestic setting, because it's the most fibrous thing that we can give them, and not too fibrous either. Not straw, don't feed them straw. Not unless we want to get impaction, call it. We're not going down that road. No straw. Mixed meadow hay that's preferably not too stalky, because they probably won't like it if it's too stalky. Uh, um, that's the cornerstone of their diet. No grass. Now, you can get away with it with some horses get away with it you can feed them grass and get away with it but if you've got like what we see is chronic lamy cyst symptoms all the time and we see on the, our track systems if you take the horses off that and you feed them just the hay then they just look healthier get healthier feet become healthier it's just a thing more movement more movement more movement get out the back, cut the bag feeds for supplements, everything out, salt mineral block. And then six months minimum, you do that, detox the system. And then you see what happens. And I guarantee 99 times out of 100, unless we've got very big underlying issues, those horses will do just fine. Thank you very much. And will thrive. If you've got uh, a skinny horse that you're trying to put weight on, you have to go some to put more weight on than natural eating hay would do that they eat 24-7, 365 with just the few breaks that they have. Okay. Um, I'm so scared that her weight is going to hurt her feet worse. No box dress. She can do whatever she wants. You know, don't be scared. Don't be scared. Eh, calories in calories out 
If she's getting an excess of calories in because she's not moving enough and you're feeding all this other stuff, that it's all about that movement. Let her move. Let her let her eat hay and she'll regulate and the weight will gradually come down. There's a, a fantastic article we, we had in a magazine about a pony who was just like that, quite overweight. And the scientist lady who owned him put him on a little track. It was only a little track with another pony. And she measured, it, took his weight every day because she didn't quite believe it too. And I said, honestly, this is what you need to do. And she took his weight every day and we had a, a, a graph or every, not every day, every uh, month, I think it was, maybe even every week. It was, it was anyway, never restricted the hay. And she went, there you go. There's the proof. If they're not shedding the excess weight, that's because they're not moving enough. So you need to put the piles around. So they go and move, 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 move. There's no good just going, I've got a track. They're not moving. I feed them in one place. No, that's not, that's not natural. You feed them all over the place. Uh, and uh, and you're feeding them the wrong hay. It's got too much. And it's not about the sugar. Mixed meadow. Honestly, Gary and I have never found it to be the case that mixed meadow hay on its own is going to cause problems. It's usually mixed with other things that are going to cause the issues. If you take the rye out of it, you don't even need to test it. Because where did that come from? That came from nutrient profiles getting this right supplement. We're not going to talk about that tonight. Uh, 70 plus laminitic rehabs done here over the years, 24 seven, and no one has ever looked in a stable yards track company. That's Jenny, I think, from Mini Ha Ha Haven. Horses need at most four important things, air, light, movement, hay, ad lib, beautiful. Yards and company, no track yet. Okay, fine. At least she can get out and she's not in a stable. That's in fact, put the hay in piles all around, little piles, so that she's not hanging around at one hay pile all the time and, and, and feed her that. Um, good, no bag feed. I haven't done that for 15 years. We got you. Just ask if you have questions. If she doesn't have constant access to hay, then you'll have more gut issues, which will affect her who's for sure. hundred percent. hundred percent. Only balancer. Don't need a balancer. What are you balancing? What are you balancing? Don't use a balancer. Uh, and there's too many of them. Uh, I was uh, Yes, I was told to do that when Honey kept getting laminitis. This is a classic from the Vets Limit. Hey, I did eventually change uh and management diet and management when i found hm and it all fell into place no longer food guarding and just enjoying fadly and how chilled right <sighs> they're so chilled aren't they when you keep horses like this because they don't have to resource guard they don't have to think that where's the next bit of hay gonna come from um keeps us fit yeah putting the hair out more horses more horses more movement yes better um that's what we need the vet's telling me she's going to get Bye bye life. No, no. Just reach out to us a little bit more. Talk to us on a post. Let us dig deeper. Let us help you. Okay. Let's see those feet as well. Uh, knackered or knackered. Know what's in your hay. Know what's in your hay. It says the hay is missing some things. What does? Your your analysis. What does your horse need that you think is being missed? Trust us. She's get she don't. This is an animal that's got EMS, for goodness sake. Strip it out. Okay, that's enough. An hour and a half. Where do you get a podcast that lasts an, lasts an hour and a half? I'm sure you've all switched off. I mean, how boring. I wouldn't want to listen to it for an hour and a half. Yes, analysis says it. For the time being, rip it up. For the time being. It's not helping. It really it's not, isn't it's helping. not helping. She is hungry. Shouldn't be. Hey, constantly. Balancer, no. Uh, supplements, no. Free choice, yes. Movement, yes. Lots of little piles, yes. Good trim, definitely. Is she getting the right trim? You don't, we don't know that either because that's going to cause big problems too. Okay. 
uh yeah she's got to go do her coursework lol uh uh what about horses with arthritis do they need anything extra no no usually if you feed them right and you give them a lot of exercise um that's another one for another day and and again it all stems from how we keep keep these horses so that's another one for another day yeah it's another one for another day you guys are amazing thank you much yes right we're off let a bird smell we're going and i'm going to go and get something to eat if we go a few four three two one exactly one hour and a half right we're definitely going now we'll see you soon <laughs> see you tomorrow night god knows what we'll talk about okay bye 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 thanks for joining us bye. we love you all thank you